first thing you're going to want to do is get the correct measurements on your photocopy piece. And on this paper, you can make your graph lines as dark as you want. Um, but you're going to want to make sure whenever you do your measurements that you include any of these white border edges. That's part of your picture. So whenever you use your ruler, start on the very edge of the paper. Don't worry about starting the edge of the photocopied image itself. You do the whole paper. And start on the top corner with your ruler. Double check your rulers. Some of them have a edge that's nothing and then it starts at zero. Some of the rulers are actually graphed and if you look at this one you can see it actually starts on the very edge. But make sure you have that put on the corner, very top corner, and make a deliberate mark every inch on the paper. All the way down. And then don't turn your paper or your ruler, just slide straight down and get to the other bottom corner, line it up, as you can see here, and then mark every inch on this as well. You've done that, uh, and you have all your marks on the top and all your marks at the bottom, take your ruler and connect those lines. That'll make lines going one direction for your graph. Turn your paper to do the other direction and do the same thing, making lines, making dot, dashes of dots on the top and on the bottom and connect those. Now one thing to remember is this is 8.5 by 11. So as you have the 11 inch, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy because they're all going to be uh, the same distance apart. But whenever you do the 8.5, which is this way here, you're going to have a half inch and one side. Just make sure if you don't turn your ruler and stuff, it'll make it the same on both sides no matter what, and it'll be graphed out. This can be as dark as you want to make it. This we're not going to do other than a basic reference. So if you want to use an ink pen to make your lines super dark, you can do that. But make sure they are clean, make sure your measurements are correct, and you'll be in great shape. We're going to take a look at making the graph on the actual clean thicker paper we're going to do our painting on. This is important that we graph it exactly the same way in terms of measurements. However, you want to make sure that all of your lines, when you actually make the graph lines, are very light. You want to use the pencil with minimal pressure. That way it's not dug into the paper. You guys have seen that when you push too hard with the pencil. You get these ditches dug in there. You don't want that. You want to make sure that they are very clean, light lines. It's going to make your life a lot easier. But do the exact same thing with your ruler. Start on the top corner. Every inch, make a mark. Straight down, don't turn anything. Every inch, make a mark. Connect your lines. Take your paper, turn it. Exactly the same. Every inch, top and bottom, connect. Don't forget, it's eight and a half by 11, so you will have a half an inch on one side just make sure that whenever you start actually graphing that they are the same on both sides. So now that you've got your graph lines done on the paper you're going to be drawing on, uh, you're actually ready to start drawing. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but these lines are very, very light. And that's really what you're going for because you want to be able to erase some of these if you need to later so people can't see the graph at the end of the day. I've already started and have gotten some things redrawn already from the actual picture. Uh, and I've got some things drawn on here to scale. It's a one to one scale, which just means it's one to one ratio. This is one inch by one inch, this is one inch by one inch. And what you're gonna be doing is taking a look at the graph lines and using them as measuring devices. Uh, we're not gonna trace, that's not what we do. And you can do a lot of this with just a pencil. Uh, you could also use a ruler if you wanted to. Uh, you can actually measure areas from the original picture and you can transcribe those measurements to your drawing. Uh, a nice way to kind of cheat, if you will, is to take your actual photocopy itself, take your pencil, and measure from the tip of the pencil and then use your thumb, the edge of the thumb here, as your, your measuring device. So what I've done here is if you look at this bowl, I went ahead and measured with my pencil from this graph line to the edge of the bowl. And I put my tip of my pencil on the bowl and my thumb then on the graph line. 
and I've gotten that measurement right there. Then I can go back to my drawing, and I've actually already made a mark, but I can kind of show you what I've done, is put this in the exact same spot, in the exact same graph line, make sure you're on the right graph line, and made a little mark. And I've done that then with the furthest out to the right bowl, I'm actually going from the edge of the graph line straight in, so that way I can put my thumb there again, and the tip of the pencil is on the edge of the bowl, holding that, and then going to my drawing, and going from the edge of that graph line, the exact same graph line, and I can hold my pencil there and, and then make another mark. Now I've got the highest point, the furthest out point, the bottom, furthest bottom, and I've actually kind of drew a little bit on the left hand side. That's going to be the top of this bowl. I kind of know where that's going to be at. And you can go through and measure every graph area that you want. Some people do. You're welcome to make little marks and then basically connect the dots at the end of the day. Now you're not going to draw every tiny detail. That's not what we're going for here. Our purpose is to do the most general thing. So you're definitely going to be drawing the shapes of your objects, your casting shadows, your shadow edges. Um, you can definitely draw a reflected light. You can see that pretty obviously here. Um, I, even on the side of this bottle, you can see it's much lighter on the left-hand side. That's reflected light. Um, there's no real highlights on any of these, which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, the background areas, uh, some of the folds, just draw the most obvious ones. One of the things you can do to help yourself is if you squint your eyes whenever you're drawing, um, then you'll be able to see the most obvious things. And that's really all you want to draw. I've got quite a bit of it here already started. And you can see I've got my cup here. I've got some of the shadowing, uh, the casting shadows here, the shadow edges. Uh, same thing with this bottle here. The casting shadows I put off the side, and you kind of see how those are laid in there as well. And that's what you guys are going for. But make sure everything is to scale. Don't trace. Use your pencil, the tip, and then your finger. Use that on every graph that you feel comfortable doing to make sure it's drawn in proportion. If you want to use a ruler, you can do that. It's the same principle. You would simply put them on anything you're measuring and get half inch, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. Um, and those are things you can do as well. This I just found it faster to do with a pencil. Take your time, draw lightly so you can erase. It is going to be painted, but some parts may be hard to paint over. You want to make your lines fairly light. And then we'll talk about the next step in just a moment. you start painting, you should have, obviously, your photocopy to be transcribed onto the paper, the graph paper. Um, again, just draw the most basic areas. I would definitely draw in the casting shadows, the shadow edges, uh, any reflective light on there. It's going to make it easier for you to see whenever you start painting. Um, and then once you have that completed, then it's obviously time to start painting. Uh, your finished piece should be similar in areas of dark and light, tone, um, tint and shade, which you're going to be adding obviously black and white to your color you choose from the list I've given you. And I'm going to show some demo stuff how to do that, but the goal is to create those same tones. Um, the image should be one color with blacks and whites, and that's our palette we'll be using for this project. Your paints together, uh, remember it's going to be black and white and your color but you want to keep those on a palette. Um, the palettes we have and the palettes I'd recommend are just simple palettes with little areas but color. You do want to have a lid that fits on just to cover it and I would have tape with your name on it. Now the, the covers are just to make sure that if you spill something it paint doesn't go everywhere. They're not meant to keep it from drying out. What I'd recommend every day is if it looks like they're starting to get a little bit um, dry on you is we have these little itemizer or atomizers uh, spritz bottles and I would just spritz them a little bit of spritzing just gives a mist of water it's going to keep them from drying out quite as quickly and then putting your lid on them and then I get a freezer bag a simple freezer bag is going to work the best for you to put your lid on as securely as you can put it into the bag close it tightly 
that's going to make sh that's going to short from drying out and spilling and making a mess. It also makes it very portable. You can take it home um, if you need to. So that works really well. Uh, another thing that happens is as you're painting, you're going to get a lot of paint inside the tray, and sometimes you want to clean it out. You've got two real options. The first is to let it dry, and if it dries out, you'd be amazed. The paint will just kind of pick out, almost like gum, and you can pick out little pieces. Uh, or chunks or even areas of the paint and it'll just peel off and you just want to throw it in the trash can. The other thing is if it's wet, use a paper towel, wipe out the paint the best you can, throw that paper towel in the trash, then you can go and clean it. You don't want to take this with dry paint and lots of wet paint and just go to the sink and just scrub it because you're going to get stuff down your drain whether you're at home or at school it's not a good thing. So get as much of that paint out, rather dried and picked out or scooped out with a paper towel before you go in and start cleaning them out. Um, but they don't have to be perfect by any means. Um, the palette I'm going to be using today, it's pretty clean. It's got some residue on there, but it's not going to hurt anything at all. Um, I've got my lid and I've got my bag and that's how you're going to take care of your paints every day. Your brushes you are going to need to clean every day, uh, sometimes within session, and just clean with some, with some water, shape them a little bit and put them away. But this is going to ensure that your paints stay good. Uh, if you take care of your brushes, you should be in good shape as far as taking care of all your material. Painting, you should have obviously your drawing ready to go. If you have any light areas that are going to be painted, that are, you know, have a lot of white in them. Um, if I look at my original, there's some areas here obviously that are pretty light. You can see them pretty easily. If those are the graph lines you're going to want to erase, and I would recommend just using a simple uh, pink pearl eraser, and on those areas just erase them very, very lightly. If there's any part of your drawing that is kind of dark, because you drew it really too dark, erase those as well. It's just going to make your life easier in the end, um, because that dark graphite is on there, the paint's going to have a hard time covering that up if it's going to be lighter. So I would do that as you kind of get started. Next thing is you're going to get your palette together and all you need is your color. I've chosen red, black and white, and you're going to be good to go. Uh, you want to have a water container, you want to have paper towels, that's going to be important to, as you work as well. Um, I typically use on something like this flat brushes. I've got a wider flat brush, a smaller flat brush, and then I'll have a round brush just to kind of help some detail work. Uh, the round brushes that you get, if they have the little, we call them their hats, the little things that keep the shape, you're going to want to keep those. Um, and after you wash any of your brushes uh, and they're ready to kind of be used or put away, it's okay for them to stay wet. You can actually shape them with your fingers to keep those, those, those same shapes. And then with the round brush, you obviously put the hat back on with your flat brushes and you go ahead and just kind of shape them the way you want them before you put them away. Um, I typically will put them in a little bit of water just to get them kind of a little bit of water on the brush itself. Uh, since these are acrylic paints, water is what's going to be used to make this kind of uh, get thinner and help it kind of mix a little bit if you need to do that as well. Um, but I'm just going to work on one little area here. I'm looking at my reference to see what areas are darker and lighter. And so in here it's going to be fairly light. So I'm going to start with a little bit of white and a little bit of red. Now I'm mixing directly on my palette just a little bit to kind of get started. So I'm kind of getting it close to where I want to be at. And I'm going to put some color directly then on my painting. And as far as tone is concerned, that's pretty close. It's pretty good from what I'm going to be going for. Um, it actually gets a little bit lighter as it goes to the left. And this is an example of mixing directly on, on your painting where I can go get some more paint. I've grabbed some white and I can go directly onto my painting and now I'm mixing it on the painting itself. I'm going to go through and use the edge of my brush to get this nice and clean on the edges. I'm going to go a little bit fast because this is just for reference. You guys want to take your time uh, and do a good job. Now if there's areas that are going to be darker in here, even if it's dry, you can go back and paint on it again. It's not that big of a deal to be able to do that and you guys should be hopefully get to the point that you're comfortable doing that. You're painting on paper, it's not canvas, so if you really dig into your painting, um, that's not going to be a good thing. It's actually going to bring up uh, the fibers um, of the paper and you really don't want to be doing that. That's not going to be a good thing. So don't dig in. You can always let it dry and come back, but I'm going to go through and just kind of lay this in as I kind of work this through to 
get basically about the tone that I want. Now on the right hand side there's some shadowing. We kind of drew it in here before and we have some here. So to get the shadowing in there it's going to get a little bit darker. Now it's not the darkest spot so be careful of that. You can see here in the shadow it's really dark. So there's obviously going to be black mixed with the red. Here it's a little bit darker. So you may not have to use any black. You may just be using more of your base color, more of the red. Um, so if I were to take just the red and put that in here, like so, you know, that's obviously much darker than my, my color I mixed with white there, and that's okay. Um, it may be actually a little too dark, and that's not a big deal either. We can always go back over it. But it's going to take a little bit of time to get references. and You're all going to have your own reference image um, that I'm going to get for you that's going to have... Uh, it's not going to be black and white. It'll be um, a monochromatic image. So it's going to have... For, for this, it would be red. And you'll be able to see all the darks and lights. So it's going to be easier for you to ma mix and match those things as you kind of start working. And remember the goal of this is number one, I wanted your drawings to be really accurate. You need to make sure, I know Mr. Pino has shown you guys how to graph and how to do this stuff one to one ratio. That's important. You wanna make sure the drawing is solid because if you don't do that, no matter how good your painting is or how good you, you think your paintings are, um, they're not gonna be as strong if, you're, if your actual drawing isn't from the, from the, from the get go. So now I'm actually dry brushing a little bit. This is dry, and the painting itself is dry, but the, the paint on the brush is wet, and it's just kind of almost like mixing into it, kind of fading into it. It's just gradually kind of mixing and laying over the top, um, and that's going to kind of help mix it. So you can do wet on wet if it's on your palette. You can do wet on wet when it's on your actual painting. Um, you guys can go through and mix on your painting and then you can actually have it dry and do a dry brush on top of it as well and that works pretty good too so it's kind of up to you how you do that take your time mix them correctly as close as you can and then make sure that it's accurate make sure that this stuff looks the way it's on your reference image as close as you can um, the drawing needs to be solid as we talked about and then your shading needs to be accurate I'm not talking about perfect I'm not looking for an airbrush, but I'm looking for them to be fairly solid in terms of, oh, I can see where your shadow edges are at, and they look fairly accurate. I can see where your, where your darks and your lights and your shadow edges and your casting shadows, they're definite, they're there, and they're easy to see. That's what the most important thing is. That's what I want you guys to be able to take from this lesson. And it's going to take you guys some time. You're going to make mistakes. Just kind of deal with that. Um, we'll get through that. Don't worry. But take your time and go through. Um, as you can see, I'm starting to already get that little bit of a tone change there. Adding a little more white to some of these areas. Again, if you get too much, use your paper towel. Wipe it off. But I can make this fairly clean as we kind of go through. Even here, I have too much paint. I can just wipe that off, put on my paper towel, go back, and I can dry brush that back in. So that kind of fades. And that works pretty nice to kind of kind of continue that transition. On the darker area over here, I can see I actually need to add a little bit of black. So I'm going to clean my brush. I don't want any white because that's going to kind of subdue. So you don't want that. Um, so get your brush kind of clean. And be careful with black. If there's one thing you guys have got to understand, and especially we start doing more paintings, I'm going to really talk about not using black that much. Um, it's one of those colors that is very powerful and you can add black but be careful because once you guys add a lot of this to your any of your pigment any of your color it tends to take over very quickly so I'm I've got like a drop of black in this and I'm adding a lot of red to kind of get just a little deeper just a little deeper is all I want so I can go back in and I can see that's a little bit darker in this area here so I'm gonna go through and, and actually try to add that in just a little bit on top. So I'm going to put this right on here. And you can see it's a little bit darker. And then I'm going to blend it in. This is a little bit of dry brushing to kind of finish up. You get too much, again, wash, wipe your brush off on your paper towel. And then you guys can go back in, do a little bit of shading with that. And you'll be amazed at, if you take your time, 
and you go through the kind of the good and the bad as you kind of go through this, you're going to get a nice transition of color and tone, and that's really what you're going for for this painting. Mm -hmm.